going to talk about the economy now. 18 states kicked off 2018 with wage increases. Uh, this shows you all of the states. Maine had the highest percentage, raising the minimum wage from nine to ten dollars an hour. There are now 29 states that have laws mandating higher pay than the 725 federal minimum wage, which has not changed since 2009. We are going to get into that discussion along with what's happening in our economy. Um, and we're going to do that by talking with Peter Morisi. Peter Morisi, as you well know, is a syndicated columnist. He's an economist at the University of Maryland School of Business. And Peter, welcome. Happy New Year. I haven't spoken to you in a while. Happy New Year. It's wonderful, isn't it? We started off the New Year with a bang. Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, well let's, let's start with the downside of this conversation, and that's minimum wages, and then go on to what you see is something really good about to happen. Which side do you come down on this, Peter? Is minimum wage raising it higher a, a good for the country? Oh, I don't think so. I think it's best to let wages be set by the market. You know, in San Francisco, where we've had some considerable experience now with a dramatically higher minimum wage, a lot of lower priced restaurants have just had to shut down. You know, there are places where you can get away with it, like lower Manhattan. If you just raise the minimum wage around Wall Street, I mean, those guys make so much money, they're not going to care whether the price of the McDonald's meal goes up by a dollar or its equivalent in a lower priced restaurant. But in most parts of the country, people do have alternatives to low-priced restaurants and similar services, and they take them. Also, go to a movie theater and see how few people work in them these days. That's a higher minimum wage. But were you, uh, I'm sure that you were uh, uh, struck by the fact that, in fact, lower wage jobs are being paid higher wages in a lot of places in the country precisely because of what you said, higher demand for labor, which is the healthy way to raise the wage. Well, right. We've had three quarters in a row of 3% growth or just about. And there's nothing better for workers than strong growth. You know, the last eight years or the, the prior eight years was based on the notion that the pie is fixed. It can't get much bigger. And so it can't get much bigger very quickly. Listen to Tim Geithner. And that, that the only way we could accomplish any justice in the society for ordinary working people was to recarve the pie. You know, if you just let the pie grow quickly and have a free-for-all, everybody gets some pie. You know, everybody gets some apples. <laughs> that's it. You know, and that's really what matters. When I was growing up, the economy was booming along. I had no trouble getting a decent wage as a student. Yeah. Uh, but now it's hard. That's right. No, it is. It's really hard. And in, in part, it is what everybody is talking about in terms of what's happening now, which is arguably President Trump's effect on the economy and America in 2018. Trump you know, and it leads to it leads to things like Peter Morisi writing, America is on the cusp of a golden age. And there's a sentence in here, Peter, I want to start with. This is why large cop corporations have more profits than they can reinvest. Wow. That sounds like a wonderful scenario, Peter. Is that true? <laughs> Yeah, well, that's one of the reasons that corporations have so much cash. But that can happen for one of two reasons. The government gets to be so oppressive that nobody wants to reinvest their profits. We had some of that, <laughs> the, you know, for the last eight years. But the other thing is, is that all these technologies that are coming online, you know, the technologies behind the apps on your, you know, your, 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 your smartphone yeah. are now becoming applicable to business. And when that happens, they're much cheaper to use than machines. And so companies can create a lot of value without spending nearly as much money as they did in the past. You know, Henry Ford rolled out the Model T. Every time he wanted to sell a 50 or 100,000 more, he had to build another factory and get more dealerships and buildings built. You know, uh, it doesn't work that way for Apple or Google. Google was started in $23 million, I think, or $25 million. And seven or eight years later, it was worth 23 or $25 billion. I mean, you, you don't get that in the industrial age. So it's just cheaper to get stuff done if you got smart people. One of our problems is, though, that a lot of companies have been run by very smart people lately, like General Electric and Yahoo and Procter and & Gamble and Unilever and so forth. And it's these small startups that are eating their lunch. You know, there's a brand of ice cream that's kicking the heck out of Briars. got Unilever going nuts. It's all the thing in the big cities. And it was started out of a kitchen. Those guys can get money because there's lots of it around and they can leverage it very quickly. 